Who? Can I get some halls up in here? No, I'm just kidding. All right, Clarissa in the building. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Member of the almighty She Trucking Trucking Group. Shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group. Clarissa, man, thank you very much for uh, coming on and uh, chopping it up with me. Uh, before we get started in everything, uh, why don't you... Uh, hold on right quick. I already had it set. Why don't you uh, give me a little bit of backstory about uh, what you used to do before trucking and, and, and why did you get into it? Okay, well... Um at first, I was just a housewife, uh, took care of my kids, and then got a divorce and had to work, worked on my job at Lowe's for like seven years. They downgraded. I was one of, unfortunately one of the ones to get downgraded and went looking for a job and couldn't find one. The ones that did called me back. Uh, wasn't what I wanted. Um, a lot of hard labor and um, crazy hours, and it just wasn't for me. And my um, son-in-law, actually, he drives trucks, and he said, well, Ma, you know, you could drive semis. You know, we make pretty good out here, you know, when I and I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not going to get in one of those big old trucks. And he said it again like a week later and got me to thinking and I got to investigating and then decided to go for it. Okay. And I got my license February the 7th, 2020. All right, all right. So we so we just recently got our license. So you're about two years in. Yeah, one and done. I did my test once. I, I passed it the first time. Yeah. Are, okay. Um, are you are you talking to me on a speaker or are you talking to me on your headset? I got my headset. You huh? Can you take them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because got my yeah, it 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 sounds like it sounds like it's underwater. It's making for bad audio. Okay. And what you need to do with the Ready? iPhone, listen. What you need to do with the iPhone is throw that bad boy out the window. You need to get on Team Android. Don't do that. Don't do that. You Don't you do that. you need to get on Team Android. Does this sound better? Oh, much. Yes. Yes. Much, much better. Okay. This is my headset. Oh, okay. Yeah. Much, <laughs> much, much better, man. Um, all right. And don't do that. I used to have an Android, but my kids, they, they bought it. So they wanted me to be on a, they wanted me to have a iPad, iPhone. So, uh, long so they paid for it. So you say your kids <laughs> got you the iPhone, man. You lucky. Oh yeah, you're lucky. I'm team. Android. Oh yeah, I'm team Android all the way. All right, so <laughs> all right, they so just try to keep tabs on me. That's all. <laughs> that's what's up. All right, so uh, uh, 2020. Uh, where? Uh, how? How mm -hmm. did you? How did you go about to acquire your license? You you went through a school or you went through a truck? You went through a trucking company. Um, I went through a trucking company. Well, yeah, school Tropica, it's called um, GDA. Um, it's down in Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, Georgia Driving Academy. And they do Stevens Transport. And uh, what I did was I studied, I got the book. This is what they was giving the book about at um, the DMV. And I got the book and I read it and I took notes. I mean, I was up to like 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, because once I set my mind to something, then that's what I'm going to do. And I said it, and I got my... Now, I failed my um, permit twice. But that third time, I got it. So, <laughs> And it was the day before I was supposed to leave. So when you come in with your permit, you get like a, a little incentive. And I was like, yay! Don't worry about oh, it. Yeah. It it, hap it happens to all of us. 
it, it, it happens all oh, yeah. I, oh yeah i i didn't get i didn't get my permit on the first go around either so you know i yeah it I, was very disappointing i was like I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry, and I cried. So <laughs> I pass. Uh, I pass my. What did I pass? I, I, I passed my. Um, you know the the fifty question, the general knowledge, and mm -hmm. uh, I think I passed the air brace. But then when it came to the doubles and triples, I missed. I, I missed the three. I missed the three. I did a couple. Mm -hmm. of, I did a couple of skips. And then I still missed the thing, and I was like, man, damn, that's... Uh, yeah, no, but, so disappointing, man. But um, I, came back the next, I came back the next day, knocked it out, and, of course, the rest is history. That's right. That's right. It took me three times, but, you know, and I, I didn't go in expecting to pass that third time, actually. I was like, you know... If I pass, I pass. If I don't, I don't. I said it, I said it, I said it. And I passed it. I went in saying, okay, well, I'm not going to go in just trying to pass all three at one time. I'm going to focus on one set at a time. So, and that's what I did. That's what's up. That's so, what's up. And I so, passed. So, the school that you went to, did, did, did Stevens Transport? pay for your school or you or or you pay for the school out of pocket or was it a grant or what uh you know you sign the contract that you will pay once you get hired on i had a bad experience with them so that didn't go too well what was what was the experience what um, what with, 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 uh was stevens stevens transport yep what, what so, was your experience with them that, that made it so bad? Well, I went to the school, to GDA, because that's who they went through, Georgia, Georgia Driving Academy. And, you know, they kept, because I had a little bit of a history, and they kept calling me out of class, going over it, going over it. And it was not showing up because it had been so long. But I didn't want to lie either because I didn't know how long they go, how far they go back. So I just tell the truth. And um, they was like, okay, well, you're all good. It's, it's okay. So I went through the whole class, got my CDL. They flew me out to Texas. I did their school for, their schooling for three hours, three days, which is 14 hours a day. That's their um, that's their orientation. Yeah, their testing and orientation and stuff, and got my uh, ID and everything. And then everyone was getting their trainer, and I did. I was. It was like me and two other people didn't. And so we had to go see this lady, and she was like, "Okay, tell me again about this and this." And so I told her. And then next thing I know, they was like, "Well, we're we're we decided not to go with you." Uh, whoa, 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 like, whoa, 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 whoa! Back it up. Wait. Yeah. So you you went mm -hmm. through the you you went through the school for for about what three four weeks, right? Uh yeah. Okay. No. Well, yeah. After I got my CDL. No, no, no. Why, out the Texas. No, 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 no. During during the time you was getting your CDL, it was a three week program, right? Three or four six week weeks. Weeks. Yeah. Oh, it was six, six weeks. weeks. Okay, so throughout mm -hmm. so throughout the six weeks that you're going through uh orient uh not orientation, but the six weeks you was going through with uh with the schooling, you chose they Steven you, you chose Steven Transport to, to to go with after the schooling. So during the so during the yeah. time of the schooling, Steven Transport is going back and forth with you, kind of like messing up the flow for you. But then, uh, but then everybody, I mean, everything was all said and done there. But then we get out to Texas. Oh, we're not going to, we're we not going to go with you. What, what, what kind of deal is yeah, that? Yeah. Even after I did the orientation, 14 days, we still had to learn new stuff. And, um, what happened was, I, I believe what happened was, I had um, called another company before I even went to the school, before I went to GDA. 
and I had some somebody had told me about another company. So I called that company just to ask questions about, you know, their process and stuff like that. And the guy wound up calling Stevens and said that I said that I didn't want to go to Stevens anymore, that I will I wanted to go with them. So when the lady called me, she called me with an attitude. I can't remember her name. Um, but she called me with an attitude and she was like, Well, since you don't want to go, you ain't got to go here, you know, because we had you all set to go and everything. I said, Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, because you just went, you just got on the phone, you just started going off, what's going on? You know, and so she told me, and I said, No, I did not tell him that. I said, Matter of fact, hold on. So I called the guy, the recruiter on three way, and I told him, I said, Why did you call Stevens? And he was like, Yes. I said, Why would you call him? And he was like, well, I thought you said you wanted to go with us. I said, I did not tell you that. I told you I was calling for information. I said, and for you to call them, I said, you was wrong. I said, I never told you that I, I wanted to go with you. I called you for information. And he See, was like, oh, well, it was just a miscommunication. And nah, I'm like, no, nah, that wasn't. wasn't. that wasn't no miscommunication. Listen, this, you right. know, now, now this and is. And so a- that made the lady mad. Well, this this is all a learning process for you. Like when you go, when you call any recruiter uh, going forward, don't have them to put you in the system. And what I mean by that, they mm. all they, they want to be like, well, go ahead, fill out the application and then we'll talk. No, 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 no. I don't want to be put in the system because when you get put in the system, they're going to call uh the companies that you either driving for or going to drive to. And that's going to mess. And, and that's, that's going to mess up your flow. I had told him. Yeah. I had told him, I said, well, I'm already on the schedule to go with Stevens. Someone had just told me about y'all and I just wanted some information, you know, of how y'all work and, you know, what are y'all, you all's process, you know, that that's all it was. And I think it made her mad. I think her name was Angela. Um, and so she was real angry, and I was just like, you know, I didn't do that. You know, I'm already packed, ready to go. I'm going with you all, you know. Um, I don't know why he did that. And I did call on three-way. And so she was like, okay, the recruiter call you back. And it went, some hours went by, and the lady never called me. So I called her back, Angela. And she was like, well, I see that you really want to do this, so we're going to let bygones be bygones. And you just come on the class like you was going to do in the first place. And that's what I did. <clears throat> okay. So, so I did everything. I get up there and they said, oh, we're not going to go with you. And it got me a bus ticket and went home. Wow. I was like, wow. Wow. And then I called the school and I was like, Eric, I said, remember, I was going back and forth with Stevens, you know, Telling them everything, he said, "Yeah, they said everything was good." I said, "Well, they told me they weren't gonna go with me," and I said, "But they never gave me a reason why." So he emailed Angela, and she told him that I lied on my application. And I took a picture of every piece of paper that I got. I took a picture of every piece of paper. I did not lie on anything. I said, "Can you ask her what did I lie about? Where did I lie on my application at?" And she never responded back. Oh, that, to him, that was some. And one pick up my calls. That was some. That, so, that was some crazy. But so, I got a job the next day. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> that's that's what's up. You know, when one door shuts, another door opens. So that's that's yeah. That's I all just right. look at it as that wasn't for me. Exactly. So with mm-hmm. the with the schooling, um, you got your CDL. So are you still mm-hmm. obligated to pay the school back? They say I am, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Did you did you pay the school back yet? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> how, how how much you well how how much how much was the tuition uh all together? Uh, it's like five. Oh, okay. Um, it was like five, but the man called and he was like, "Oh, well, we'll do it for." Forty two hundred, and I was like, mm, okay, I well, don't I, have it. I, I'll give you, I, I'll give you twenty five dollars a month. How's that? Just to keep you guys off my yeah. back. Yeah, and he, that's what he said. And he said I had told him, you know, I could pay you 
I had the month out of week, and he was like, no, we need to all up front. I was like, well, uh, well, well. He was like, you got your CDL, then you? you got your CDL, then you? I said, yep, and a job. That doesn't mean that I'm going to start making that good uh, $1,000, $1,500 a week like y'all promised me, but hey, that's even here exactly. or there. So, Clarissa, exactly. man, um, wow, that's, that, that is crazy to, to hear that. It really is. Um, I, I think, yeah. I, I think it was, I, I think it was because of the, the, because of that ill-fated phone call that, that, uh, that, that other recruiter kind of, kind of threw you under the bus type deal. And that, that wasn't right either. I do too. And then when I got up there, like, you know, they, they do a background again, a background check. And the lady said, well, I mean, your background good. Nothing's coming up. So I'm like, okay, so I don't need to put this. I don't have to put what I did in my past past, you know, a little while. And uh, <laughs> I don't have to put in my past that I did go to jail because it's not showing up because it's been over 20 years ago. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah. he's like, nothing's showing up. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait, hold on, Chloe. It's a jail? J jail? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what yeah, happened? I was bad. What happened? Um, look, which time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you what, just give me, give me the cliff notes. How's that? Are, are we, are, are, are we talking felony here, or are we just talking about this going to jail on a humble? What, which one are we talking about? And I used to be really, really mean. And I mean, if somebody look at me, a, a woman look at me wrong, I mean, I'm like, what What you want? I slap her anything. It didn't matter to me. And then me and my ex, you know, we got into it and I bust all this windows and flattened his tires. So, and yeah. He, and he called the police on you, huh? Yeah, but he came and got me out the same night, so. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he you wasn't. He not let me sit in there. But that, that, <laughs> so that was just, uh, just, just, uh, going to drunk take type deal. So that, so you was afraid that was, well, of course that was show up in your background, but. Uh, did well, you, I didn't know. I didn't drink. I was just a mean person. That I'm, um, you know. <laughs> so you, uh, <laughs> so you know, you 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 did a stint, a couple of days in jail, and that that was it. And did did, did the relationship flourish after that, or you guys decide to call it quits? Yeah, we got, <laughs> uh, you got, we got married. We got married. Y'all still married to this day? <laughs> no, we was together for eleven years. We're divorced. I have a new husband now. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay, okay, okay. But we got divorced, and but we we were still seeing each other for like twelve years. Okay. He was in a relationship. Well, we all three was in a relationship together, matter where we face us. Gotcha. Gotcha. We don't leave each other alone. All right. But when I met my husband, all that ceased. <laughs> <laughs> your your husband? He's a truck driver too, or no? He's not. No. Would how how do he feel no. about how how do your current husband feel about you being a truck driver out here? Um, he's proud of me. He kept um he gave me all the positiveness that he could when I was studying, when I talked about it, when I first talked about it, he was like, You could do it, you could do a lot of things, you could put anything you can put your mind to to and you know, if that's what you wanna do. I'm behind you 100%. So. All right. So he was very supportive. Cool. You don't get that. You you don't mm -hmm. get that. You don't get that support from that many uh, significant others. You know, they, they say, yeah. they say trucking is, is, is like 50% of the cause of, of more divorces, you know, between uh, married. That's couples. what they say. But I mean, while I was studying and getting ready, I mean, he cleaned house. He washed dishes, he washed clothes, he's dried clothes, folded clothes. He's seen about the two kids that we have custody of, um, made sure they bathed, got in bed. I mean, he didn't too much let them bother me. He um he was very, very good because he this he knew this is what I wanted and 
He didn't want me to have any interruptions or anything like that. Um, he cooked. He did everything. So oh. he still does that today. So I have a good man, and I fight a woman about him. All right. But, um. Yeah, nobody's going to get tra- him. Tra- <laughs> tragedy <laughs> struck you. Um. Uh, I'm assuming about yes. a year about a year ago. Uh yes. And you you definitely uh came on and 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 spoke out about mental health and depression. That yes. that that is something yes. that a lot of us truck drivers in a lot of these groups, you know, and on social media in, as a whole don't talk about. Um Yes. Go ahead. I go live every chance I get to talk about that. Go. Because a lot of um, African Americans don't want to talk about it. They feel like they're weak or somebody's going to judge them or whatever. But I didn't realize how bad it was until my sister's freak accident. Um, go, a car, uh, go, the car break. Go ahead and tell. Go ahead and tell the your car. story. What What happened? So the car breaks. The car brakes went out and the truck ran over her and killed her instantly. Um, instantly, I was in Atlanta, so I was like three hours away. So that was the toughest drive of my life. Um, my mom died of cervical cancer when I was 24. So, of course, she took over that role. And I was uh, 45 when she died. So it just, it brought up a lot of things and it made me mad because she didn't wait on me um, to get there, but she died instantly. But one part of my brain was fighting with the other side. I had a rational side and I had an irrational side and they was fighting together. And then I had this dark cloud over me. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to sleep. I just couldn't believe it. I cried. And I mean, I just burst out crying and, you know, people always say, well, think about the good times. And that's what hurts the most when you're thinking about them smiling and laughing and you're not going to be able to see that again and hear that again. And that actually may, makes it worse for some people. It made it worse for me. I couldn't think of the good times because I wanted her. I wanted her with those good times. Those good times made me so sad because. I want I want more of those good times, you know, and I miss her to death. I still miss her. And it just, it threw me into a deep, deep depression, which I had just got over a depression because my mom died at 44. And I thought I was going to die at 44. So I got really depressed, got my affairs in order, and finally talked to my doctor about it. And he gave me a little medicine, you know, he gave me some medicine. And he said, don't keep that stuff in like that, you know. And um, so I went, when I turned 44, I just knew I was going to die because my mom died at 44. So that was a depression. And I had just got over that um, that, that year. And then the next year, here my sister died. I seen her that Sunday. We talked, we laughed, we hugged, we told each other we loved each other. I told her I got to get ready to go. Because I got to leave out in the morning, and the next day she died. What What exactly happened? Like you, you said it was a freak accident, and the and the brakes went out. Like yeah, the, what, what what exactly happened? She was, she was at a um a barbecue, and um she was sitting down, and she was going to get ready to go. Her knees was bothering because my sister was a little overweight, you know, and her knees was bothering her, and Actually, her son from the truck around, and he was trying to get it up the hill. And I don't know whether the transmission wasn't catching, but when he let off the gas, the car just shot. And it went straight to her, my niece, and my niece-in-law. And he hit the brakes, but the brakes wouldn't work. They went all the way to the floor, and it just ran over her. And he's not in jail or anything because uh, they tested the truck and the brakes was out. Wait, so wait, 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 they, wait, they, yeah. Wait, um, wait, yeah, wait, her son I'm, ran over. Yeah. Her, oh my God, 
her, her son. Uh, yeah. So what was this like like a like a pickup truck or a semi? It was a um it was a Durango. Oh my god. A SUV. Yeah. So, so and it um it what, bust a school. Oh, I am so sorry to hear yeah. that. And this and this was done by oh, so he so you so it was like on an incline. It it was yeah. it was like on the incline, and and he was steady trying to give it gas, and when he let off the gas, from what the DBI said, all the gas when it went went, what because he was trying, he was steady pushing on the gas, and when he let let off the gas, all the gas that he didn't push, it all came, and it just made the car shoot the truck shoot forward. And then when he tried to stop, the brakes went out. I mean, they went all the way to the floor. And um, even when they tested it, the brakes went to the floor, and they said the transmission was going out. That's why it wasn't getting the gas. Oh, my God. Now, I, I know by the sound of your voice how much that affected you, but how that that must have been devastating for her for her son though it is and we try to be there for him as much as we can um he knows my my um phone is always open no matter when he needs to talk um me my sister and my mom look so much alike that uh, a lot of i mean my sister had seven kids which she had nine to that but they they really it's hard for them to see me because they see my mom and my sister. So every time he see me, he just grabbed me and he hugged me and he cried. And I didn't try to do it, auntie. I didn't try to do it, auntie. And, you know, we're just like, you know, I just, we know, she know, you know, you got to get yourself together. You got to put it together. You know, um, I really want him to see a psychiatrist, but he don't have the funds. And there's nothing out there that just say, okay, you can go see a psychiatrist you know, and try to get over this and not over it, but find a way to live with it. So he's basically been trying to deal with it on his own. And by doing that, he started using drugs. And um, so it's it's still a big matter that's going on. So You, you know, there's, um, there's this online, uh, if I can remember, because I I I I've seen the I've seen the commercial for it. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's called Better Health. Better Health. Uh, Better Health. Yes. I'm I'm not sure uh, if it's a you know if it's a fee, but I think they they do have some some free consultations. Um, yeah. They should be able to you know, put them in connection with, uh, you know, with, with a psychiatrist that, that, that can help them out. I mean, this is just a, a start, you know, and, and like you said, because of, right. you know, because of the funds, it's kind of hard to get that good psychiatrist, mm -hmm. you know, to get your head right. And I can see after, right. after a traumatic incident, of this magnitude that he would turn to drugs because basically what he's doing, yeah. basically what he's doing is, 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 is trying to, is trying to forget, is trying to get away. And. Yeah. And then his daughter was born on the day his mom died. So it was, it, that's, that's crazy. Well, as long as all, so and, we was all mad about that. As long as all y'all together for him, you know, as long as all y'all pull together for him, just to let him know that there is somebody that he could talk to, somebody that he can reach out to. You know, just just you know, just keep you know, just 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 keep at him. You know. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. He's on my line is open. We got mad with each other because the girl that the female he was with scheduled her C section. To have the baby on the same day my sister died, so we got really, really mad with him and her because, like I told him, I never celebrate the day that my sister died. 
and you okay with having a child on the day that she died? And he told me, he said, he just feel like his mom came back to him, like she's telling him that it's okay. She know that he didn't try to do it. So when he put it that way, I'm like, okay, I respect your decision, but you got to respect mine because I never celebrate the day that she died. So I don't know what we're going to do about that little girl. Y'all going to have to celebrate yourself, but respect my, respect me because I, I won't be there. So, and it's not the baby's fault, but exactly. it's it's crazy. So you it's crazy. You, I can't you. So to get your so to get yourself together, you decided to uh, talk to a psychiatrist. Uh, how, mm-hmm. how how did talking to a psychiatrist get your sobriety back? Uh, well, he put me on some meds, of course. Um, and then, like psychiatrists, don't really talk to you. He sent you to a counselor. He's just the one that puts you on meds. And so I've been talking to the counselor for about six months now, and we talk about everything. And um, a lot of things came up in from my past, you know, a lot of things that I held down. So um, basically, I think the meds that we finally got, he finally found the right one, helped me start thinking rationally instead of irrationally. And I think it's just, it was just step by step. And I finally, you know, because I got custody of my niece, my great niece and nephew. I had them since birth. They're five and, and three now. And I have grandkids. I have kids. I mean, and a lot of my depression came from also, you know, if I die, my daughter won't have a mother figure at all because my mom gone and my sister gone and that's it. You know, so that was hard on me because I'm I'm like, you know, if I die, you know, who's going to be there for my baby? Who's going to be there for my daughter? But um, I have grandkids and I have kids and I have the two kids that I'm taking care of. And then, you know, my sister kids and her, her grandkids. And just one day I'm just like, you know what? I got to pull it together. I got to be there because I've always been the strong one. I can't let this, I can't let the, this ditch, I got to come up out of this ditch. You know, there's been a lot of ditches dug for me, but I climbed out of them. And this one almost swallowed me, almost swallowed me whole. How did and you- people don't understand how I tell them that I, I literally felt my heart broken in, inside my chest. And it's hard to explain. I mean, it was, I literally felt felt it broken I was so broken my heart just in my chest was just a million pieces broken and it, they're not it, it's not healed healed but I'm at the point where either I'm gonna let this eat me up or I'm gonna come up out of it and God has helped me in the midst of it all you know he's helped me he's held my hand and he showed me the way and I've got to either it's going to swallow me whole and my kids are going to lose me sooner than they, they have to, or I'm going to fight. And I chose to fight. That's what's up. Congratulations. I'm glad you, I'm glad you here. I'm glad you did fought. I'm glad you won the battle and I'm glad that you're here on the, on the lockout man podcast show to tell your testimony. Thank you very much for that. Uh, how did your You're very welcome. How did your husband uh, you know what what was the state of your husband uh what was the state he was in while you was going through all of that? Uh my husband is not like a feeling sure I guess you can say he was like lost. He didn't know whether to hug me, leave me alone or what because I snap in a minute in a hot second, you know, so he didn't know what to do. He just, he was just there. If I need to talk, he listened. You know, um, if I just need peace and quiet, he do that. You know, he'll take the kids off and they'll go to the park or something. You know, um, he made sure I, I had something to eat. My appetite was gone. I mean, literally gone. I lost like, I was losing like five pounds a week. 
and because I just didn't have an appetite. But, you know, um, he made sure I kept um, Powerades and Gatorade for those electrolytes and stuff like that. You know, but he's not a feeling sure. Like, literally, he's not a feeling sure. Like, when his mom's death come up, you know, you don't know it because he don't, he don't show his feelings like I do. You know, I'm sad, I'm upset, you know, but but I know he's there, you know, and that's my comfort because I know that any time and anything that I need, he's there. Yeah, so that that is good to yeah. hear because some I, I don't I don't think I, I don't think some men that you know, I, I think some men probably would have would have would have would have would have got weak uh in a situation like yours you know they they would have just been like okay well let me just get you back together and then i'll i'll bounce out you know that's where many uh marriage issues come into play because Mm -hmm. now that he don't have you to comfort him he's going outside to get comfort if you know what I mean, by nah. but he never, nah. he, nah. he was strong enough to not do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So more yes. power, more power. To he, him. I, now one thing about it, I trust him 100%. I trust this man with, I trust him 100%. You know, if somebody come to me today and say, Hey, I see your man with another woman. I'm going to look at them like they crazy because I know, you know, he's not finna do that. You know, I've shaped and I, you know, I've shaped and molded him from where he was to where he is now, you know, and he know he has a good woman that wants to see him do better because he, he was a bachelor when I met him. He has no kids. He didn't have anything, you know, to, to hold him down. But I came into his life and I showed him more of just the partying and hanging out and people spending your money, you know, and stuff like that. I shaped and molded this man to what I want him to be, to what he needs to be. And he changed. He didn't change just because of me. Because you can't make nobody change if they don't want to change. He wanted to change. And he has done that. So I trust this man 100% with everything. He, he the, the little boy that we have, oh, and the little girl, they love him to death. You know, they say Uncle Daddy, I'm Auntie Mama. And it's nothing in this world. If this man can go up to the sky and get me a star, he would do that. So, you know, I got a good one. And I shaped and molded him for me, not for nobody else. You know, if I die before he do, the woman better, when she dies, she better come to me and tell me thank you. You was strong enough to <laughs> you. You was strong enough to 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 get back into the into the truck. Uh, when this situation yeah. when this situation had happened, you you said you was driving. So, are you still driving for the same company that you took time off for? And how was how was the company uh, support if they was supportive? How how did they react to you letting them know that you needed you know an extensive time off? I am. I'm with the same company. Um, I sent a message uh, through my call, 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 and I told them that I need to take some um, my um, for a minute, uh, for a week, and that wasn't enough for me to get where I needed to be. So said. Um, I I used my PTO for a week, my paid time off, and I thought that would be enough for me to get back out here. Um, but it wasn't, and I have short-term disability and long-term disability that I pay for with through my um my benefits. So I utilized the short-term disability at first, and that wasn't enough. So. Then I utilized the long-term disability. My doctor filled out the paperwork. 
Um, so you was they able call me you, the you, company. You was able to use uh, FM uh, FMLA. FMLA, yeah. Um, the company, my like my driver manager, and um, I don't know who the other person was. They would call me periodically and see how I'm doing. You know, um, told me to take as much time as I need to get right. And um, so they had me on on leave um, until basically. Was you still getting paid? Um, uh, was you still getting paid through them or no? Um, with the long term disability, it took like six weeks. But um, eventually, they start paying me a portion of what I made um, for 12 weeks. But my husband, he took care of us, so it didn't matter. Either way, my so, husband said, take all the time I need. So this is, so, this you is, know, he, he had us. This, this is 20, this is 2022. So the, mm -hmm. inc the incident happened in 2020 or 2021? 2021. 2021. Right. 2021. Right, right after right mm -hmm. after the pandemic, huh? Correct. Mm hmm <sighs> Yep. And they call me. Um, the company that I'm with, they call me. They make sure I'm okay. Um, they ask me how things are going. I mean, they didn't just leave me out there hanging and forgot about me. They didn't do that. And, you know, that's what I like about you know, that's one thing that I can appreciate about the company that I'm with. And um, when it was time for me to come back, they made sure I was comfortable enough to come back and I was ready to come back. You know, um, it's certain things, you know, like I don't like internationals. So, and they only have international and freight liners. And I let them know, you know, I don't like international. I need a freight liner. And that's what they gave me. Um, they, they, they've been awesome. They've been awesome. And I don't see myself going anywhere no time soon because I don't know a lot of companies that would do that. You pulled, you, you, you told me offline that you said you, you, you pulled nitrogen. Say again? You, you told me offline that you pulled nitrogen. That, that's what you pull? That's the type of freight you pull? I pull what? What what type of what what type of freight do you pull? I'm a dry van, so I do tissue and like lately they've been having having me do dog food on the um uh let uh track the supply. Okay, where did I get nitrogen from? Okay, wow. Huh. I, you know what? I you know what? I probably got you. I I probably got another. I I got another person that said to come in, and they told me that they was pulling nitrogen or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't even know where I get that nitrogen. From. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but um, but <laughs> shout out about that. But but shout out to you for you know for for getting you getting you back together and taking the time that you need to uh you know yeah. to get your head right what do you what do you clarissa what do you suggest for people that that's that's battling depression and trucking you know that really has that mental that that had that mental roadblock how, how do you how do you uh what, what type of advice or what do you suggest that uh that a person do when when they come up with those with those type of issues in trucking Talk about it. Talk about it. Um, sometimes it's easier to talk to people that you don't know, but getting it out helps a lot instead of holding it in. Holding it in is only, after a while, it's going to burst. And sometimes it's going to burst in ways that it shouldn't. And that's with suicide, you know, or something like that, or just make you go completely crazy. My suggestion is to talk. If you can't talk to a psychiatrist, talk to somebody, um, somebody that you think that you that that you know that you can trust, or um, just you know sometimes strangers will just listen to you because they know that some people just need to vent. You know, um, they have hotlines out there 
that you can call. My, my suggestion is to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. If you feel like you need medication, don't be afraid to say to your doctor, hey, I'm going through some things. I'm battling some demons. I need some medicine. I need some help. You know, that a lot of people, they don't want to say that, say things because they think that the doctor is going to send them to a crazy house or something. No, it's not going to be like that unless you're saying you're suicidal. That's when they're going to send you so you can be watched. Um, telling your doctor that you are depressed and you feel, you know, down in the dumps and, 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 and things are just not going right and you don't know which way to turn and you got this dark cloud over you. He'll probably start you on some medication. Don't be afraid to use medication. I mean, sometimes they have to put you on different ones to find the one that fits you. You know, don't be afraid of that. Some people say, oh, don't get the medication, baby. Listen, do what's best for you, not what nobody else, because nobody else is going through what you are going through. Do what's best for you. But my, my thing is talk. Talk about it. I actually... You know, my son, he sent me a pot set, and it sent me over the edge. I cried, I cried, and I finally talked to my daughter. And I told her how I was feeling and what was going on or whatever. And, you know, not even 30 minutes later, she's knocking on my door, and she right there hugging me, and I'm talking. I'm not all alone and everything. And I'm telling her what I couldn't, that I didn't want to tell her, because, you know, parents always try to... um keep their kids from, you know, keep their kids out of, they don't want to want them to see them weak. I put it that way. And I, I've always been strong. So of course I didn't want my children to see me weak. I have one daughter. I have five kids, four boys and one girl. And I never wanted her to see me weak at all, but I was very vulnerable and I needed her at that time. And you know what? I'm glad I did because now she's there. She know what's going to. I almost gave the kids, the two kids that I have, I almost gave them to foster care because I felt like I wasn't good enough for them. And talk, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Don't be afraid to get on medication. Don't um, let nobody tell you how to get out of depression. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, just go to God. Yes, you can go to God, but sometimes you need more. All right, all right. You know. All right. Clarissa, I want you to I, I want you to listen to this statement that this uh young lady just recently said on TikTok. And I I want your uh I want your opinion on it. She says that uh if you want to become a truck driver, nine times out of ten, you're gonna die sick and broke. Do you do you agree with that? What's your thoughts on that? You're gonna die sick and broke? That's what she said. You're going to die sick and broke. I don't understand that, but um, I don't know where she's getting her. I, I, that's crazy. I, that's like a speechless thing because, I mean, why would she, you know, my question to her would be, why would you say that? You know, what makes you think that, you know, um, If you're going to be broke when you die after from truck driving, that means that you're trying to live outside your means. You know, truck drivers, yeah, we make good money, but we don't make, like, money, money. So if you're trying to live outside of your means and you're spending more than what you're making, and if you die while you're a truck driver, and you have no money, that means that, to me, that means you lived outside your means. Mm, that's what's um, up. For us being sick, um, I I was hit, but I haven't been sick since I've been a truck driver, except for that with my sister. And that was, um, that was a freak accident that went on, and that I haven't been sick 
<laughs> so I don't, what speak is she talking about? You know, she just, you know, it's a lot of questions that you can, you, with that little statement that she made, it's a lot of questions behind that, that I have. Like, why are you saying, what makes you say that, you know, what kind of sickness are you talking about? Why would you think that you would be broke? You know, are you, you know, once you get paid, do you just spend frivolously or what? Are you saving or, or not? You know, I, that, I don't agree with it. Me personally, I don't agree with that. All right. All right. Clarissa, Clarissa, thank you very much for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, man. I, very, very, You're intri- very, welcome. very intriguing testimony. I, I really enjoyed myself. I am so sorry my condolences goes out to you and your family thank you um i i I cannot imagine you know again how how her son is is uh is feeling right now and i'm hoping that he definitely gets the help that he needs that he can uh that he can uh use and everything wow very very powerful yeah very powerful thank you very much guys you know the best conversations man listen the best conversation starts Mm -hmm. here on the lockout man podcast show if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me you know how to do it 216-600-2090 zero and we just get in and have a great conversation you want to vent you want to talk you need an ear i am here that is what's up thank you very much for listening thank you very much for listening thank you for watching i really do appreciate it don't forget to hit that like button subscribe button and that bell so you'll get the notifications next time when i get intriguing and interesting guest that comes on the show until next time everybody y'all take it easy peace i'm like beethoven with the bass on it me class kids went pop death to the hater won't stop let's talk key scales won't drop you don't even need a scale to know i'm on top me and mozart bars you got pops urge red and tiffany a whole symphony you a symptom even go off or make a masterpiece for you or at least it's gonna hit like rump bump bump y'all fit to me like the symphony your career's done done done